The lower your voice is, the better you sound. So if I yawned a lot, yes. I might start sounding like Morgan Freeman? No, but you would certainly get a deeper voice. It's an honor to be portrayed by the golden-voiced Morgan Freeman. That man could read the phone book and make it sound interesting. Five, 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 three, four, nine, two. Hmm. Just listen to that rich molasses. We sat and drank with the sun on our shoulders and felt like free men. Hell, we could have been tarring the roof of one of our own houses. We were the lords of all creation. As for Andy, he spent that break hunkered in the shade. A strange little smile on his face, watching us drink his beer. Forgiveness starts here too. Forgiveness liberates the soul. It removes fear. That is why it is such a powerful weapon. Decency! And decency is not a deal! It isn't an angle, or a contract, or a hustle. Decency Decency is what your grandmother taught you. It's in your bones. You go home. Go home and be decent people. Be decent. Maybe I'm in the wrong line of work. Maybe I should take on something less challenging. You do what you are, Jesse. You mean you are what you do? No, I mean, you do what you are. You're born with a gift. If not that, then you get good at something along the way. And what you're good at, you don't take for granted. You don't betray it. What if you do betray your gift? Then you betray yourself. That's a sad thing. Parting your soup is not a miracle, Bruce. It's a magic trick. A single mom who's working two jobs and still finds time to take her kid to soccer practice, that's a miracle. A teenager who says no to drugs and yes to an education, that's a miracle. People want me to do everything for them, and what they don't realize is they have the power. You want to see a miracle, son? Be the miracle. Ernest Hemingway once wrote, the world is a fine place and worth fighting for. I agree with the second part. Come on, it was a car accident. They call them accidents because it's nobody's fault. And what are you? So full of hate you just want to go out and fight everybody because you've been whipped and chased by hounds. Well, that might not be living, but it sure as hell ain't dying. And dying's what these white boys been doing for going on three years now. Dying by the thousands. Dying for you, fool. I know, because I dug the graves. And all the time I'm digging, I'm asking myself when, when, oh Lord, is going to be our time. Well, time's coming when we're going to have to ante up. Ante up and kick in like men. Like men! Cities fall. But they are rebuilt. And heroes die, but they are remembered. We honor them with every brick we lay, with every field we sow, with every child we comfort, and then teach to rejoice in what we have been re-given. Our planet, our home, Let us begin. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. 
It's difficult to understand the sum of a person's life. Some people will tell you it's measured by the ones left behind. Some believe it can be measured in faith. Some say by love. Other folks say life has no meaning at all. Me? I believe that you measure yourself by the people who measured themselves by you. If we catch John Doe, and he turns out to be the devil, I mean, if he's Satan himself, that might live up to our expectations, but he's not the devil. He's just a man. The man's ethics, the only possessions he'll take beyond the grave. Sometimes people have to go back and fix the things that made them unhappy before they were happy. I once heard a wise man say, there are no perfect men in this world. Only perfect intentions. Let me ask you something. If someone prays for patience, do you think God gives them patience? Or does he give them the opportunity to be patient? If they prayed for courage, does God give them courage? Or does he give them opportunities to be courageous? If someone prayed for the family to be closer, do you think God zaps them with warm, fuzzy feelings? Or does he give them opportunities to love each other? 